podcast. We are so excited today. We are here for one of our off network episodes. We're talking about some of the films on Lifetime and we have one Netflix we're talking about and uh, it's going to be really, really fun. We love doing these episodes. I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and today I have a very special guest with me. I have the director of the new comedy film, new, which called a satire parody I feel like satire sounds smarter. Satire. Satire film, Cup of Cheer. If Jake Horowitz is here. And thank you so much, Jake, for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a fan of the show and I love uh, I love talking about these movies. So I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be a director and, and working on this film. Yeah, um, so Cup of Cheer is uh, my second feature film. Um, My first one is uh, not at all like Cup of Cheer, sort of more of of an indie uh, coming of age story. It was funny, but but not like ridiculous funny uh, as Cup of Cheer is. Mm -hmm. I had always wanted to do a movie that was sort of uh, along the lines of Airplane or Naked Gun or the classic uh, parody films that just uh, still remain so funny and have like one laugh every 10 seconds. Um, Mm -hmm. and so I love the idea of doing that, um, as a spoof of Hallmark Christmas movies. Um, Yeah. So did you grow up watching Christmas movies, watching Hallmark movies, or was it something in your house a lot or what was your background? Um, it's more just, um, in the, I'm I'm from Canada and in the Canadian film industry, uh, Hallmark Christmas movies are such a huge part of what everybody is working on all Mm -hmm. the time. Of course, they're almost always filmed here and with the Canadian cast and crew. And so after my first movie, a lot of, uh, you know, everyone was like, that was great. Uh, You should um, do a Hallmark movie now because that's how you get paid. Mm -hmm. And um, that was like, sort of appealing and sort of unappealing to me. I, I, I started, you know, of course I knew about them and, and I had watched them before, but I started watching them more with an eye towards how would I uh, do my own version of this? Mm-hmm. And you quickly realize there is nobody's own version of them because they're all, they're different in different ways, but they're mm-hmm. all, they're all part of the same uh, universe. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought a really fun way into that was to do a movie that looks and sounds and feels exactly like a real Hallmark Christmas movie, but it's totally ridiculous and off the wall and uh, a little bit more adult skewing, not so wholesome. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you are a big Christmas fan in general? Were you you someone? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I love, you know, I love that that I like, you know, I think we put the the movie is not making fun of Christmas. It is in the spirit of Christmas. It makes Mm -hmm. you feel Christmassy. We put a lot of care into doing that and coming at it from a from a place of love and, and admiration for the the season and the feeling, you know, we didn't want to be an anti-Christmas movie. We wanted mm-hmm. to be a different kind of Christmas movie. Yeah. So one of the reviews that I saw on from one of my fellow critics on Rotten Tomatoes said, Cup of Cheer is made for fans of Christmas who are aware of the absurdity, but still love it. And so I was wondering if that was kind of your goal. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah. Um, I think the nice thing about, and you know, we've had so many lovely reviews. Their response has been really great. Um, One of the nice things is that even people who love Hallmark movies have really loved this film Mm -hmm. because it's not, you know, it's not attacking it. And it's not, it is kind of saying these movies are stupid, but no more than anyone who watches the movies would also say, you know, I think that that as people who like these movies, we're aware of the flaws and and we're aware of what's, why those are actually strengths in some ways. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. it is, it is very much for people who love Hallmark Christmas movies and people who hate them will also enjoy it. Yeah. That's the thing is when people point out, oh, the tropes or the silly parts. And I just always just want to be like, yeah, what's your point? <laughs> yeah. Actually, That's I mean, what makes it good. That's what makes it fun. Is that some of the movies that we're going to talk about today, I think go away from those tropes. And then I'm like, yes. no, can we go, can we get back to the classics, please? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I mean, in all genres of movies have formulas and templates that that's what makes it a genre. That's mm-hmm. what makes it what it is. And uh, it's all about how you execute within that genre that you're working in. And these are also obviously very small budgeted films. So, and they have to work within the structure of a 
of a movie, a TV film with nine ad breaks. It's not, it's not easy to do. Anyone who thinks they're writing a Hallmark movie is easy is crazy because it's really difficult to get all of that in and to make it charming and to have the leads have great chemistry and <laughs> to make it work. It, it's very difficult. And to do it in the time that they have. It's also, yeah. especially this year, like these movies were turned right. around in a month or two. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I know. I can't even believe it that yeah. between Hallmark and Lifetime, there's over 70 movies, new movies. It's mm -hmm. amazing. And, and they didn't start shooting until what, August maybe? <laughs> For most of them. I mean, they have some acquisitions, particularly Lifetime. Some of the ones we'll talk about are acquisitions, but still yeah. uh, it's amazing. It really is incredible. <laughs> I feel like every other branch of media is like delay, 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 delay. And Hallmark and Lifetime are like, we're going forward. <laughs> yeah, we thought we were fast by making this thing in a year. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so what was that process like for you making Cup of Cheer uh, as far as because you were you wrote the script, right? And uh, and to go to go through the script and, to, and then the filming and the casting and all of that stuff. How what was that experience like? Yeah, it was. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, it was we thought it was very fast. It is very fast for, you know, cause this isn't a TV movie. It's not a movie, mm -hmm. but we, we don't have a team of hundreds of people like sure. Hallmark does. Um, so it was incredibly fast in the sense that we started writing it um, Christmas last year. Mm -hmm. And now it came out, uh, it came out last week. Mm -hmm. And that's an incredibly fast turnaround for a film like this. Um, we shot it in late February in a, a real Canadian winter where it was minus 30 degrees every day in the snow. Um, you know, none of that stuff where the actors are standing around in the summer and then the right. snow is later and all that stuff. You can see people's breath and you can see people's tears freezing on their faces and, and you can see that everyone's cold, mm -hmm. which I think adds a lot and it's a nice yeah. moment. Yeah, that's um, always a nice touch when you yeah. feel like, ooh, these actors are really sacrificing here. This is really right, cold. Yeah. <laughs> If you can tell they actually went to Alaska or wherever. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we, we filmed it uh, and wrapped like a few days before lockdown um, and then just spent months and months editing it and working mm -hmm. on post and then finally, uh, finally got it out there and it's streaming uh, on Amazon Prime for free to everyone who has a Prime account uh, starting on November 20th. Mm, nice. And this is... I don't know if it's officially rated, but it's, it's space. Did you say it's R rated film? I wouldn't call I would call PG 13. It's mm -hmm. there's some, you know, there's some cr crude language, not a mm -hmm. lot, maybe swear words, but it's definitely not, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's for a kid and I wouldn't say it's for someone who, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's for those people who get offended by when Hallmark movies, um, do something that they deem offensive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hallmark movies are rated G, right. and this is not rated G. Uh, it does have some toilet humor in particular, yes. I would <laughs> say, literally, in certain parts. Um, and uh, and so, if that's not your jam, then you're this is not for you. But uh, if uh, if if you think some if the, you think some of that stuff and some sort of more childish sort of Purell humor is funny, then it might be worth. Uh, you might enjoy it. And I, I, I didn't laugh at, not every joke landed, I'm not gonna lie, but I thought enough did that I overall had a fun experience watching it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting, I mean, there, you know, there's like 600 jokes in the movie and intentionally, um, you know, different jokes are, are funny for different people. Sure. So that they're going to laugh at. Um, and, you know, I, I've always said that if you don't, if you don't like a joke in 10 seconds, there will be another one that you probably do like. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, that that's true. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a, it's a different it's a mix of different comedy styles, and there's really should be something uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of people in there. Yeah, well, very cool. So thank you so much for coming and uh, talking about these other movies with us. And I wanted to say out front that if I seem like a bit of a grumpy goose this episode, I have been super nice this entire season. I have not mm -hmm. criticized really hardly anything that we've talked about. So this is kind of an oddball. It had to happen eventually. I'm not a big fan of any of these movies uh, from Lifetime this weekend. It was not a great run for them, uh, but we'll still have some positives and some fun things to say. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 
that's it. Uh, and uh, and then also I wanted to talk about very quickly my little mini review of Jingle Jangle. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to listen to my longer review over on my uh, other channel. You can check that out. But uh, Jingle Jangle uh, debuted this last week on Netflix, and I was really excited for it. I gave it a diamond ring in my in our preview. And it's a musical. I love musicals. It has a great cast. It looked really wonderful. And overall, I enjoyed it. I think it's, I did give it fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's, it's got a lot of energy. I did like the singing was very well done. It's got a ton of great production values in it, but it was a little bit disappointing. It wasn't quite what I wanted it to be. And so maybe that was my flaw to have too high of expectations, but even though I liked it, the story is kind of a mess <laughs> and it's going all over the place and there's a lot of characters and uh, I, I think that they could have done a better job of connecting everything. And so that wasn't great, but I still think it's enough to be worth a watch. And it certainly got lots of Christmas spirit in it. <laughs> if you've seen it, let us, let us know in the comments what you think of Jingle Jangle. Okay. So let's talk about Christmas on the Vine. This was the first movie this weekend from Lifetime. And this stars Juliana Gwill and John Core. And this, the summary is, it's a young marketing executive is assigned to help a struggling family-owned winery in a town that has lost its Christmas spirit due to a large wine conglomerate. And this uh, also has Meredith Baxter in it. And... Jake, what was your overall thoughts about this movie? Um, this was my favorite of the three. Mm -hmm. really. um, and I think that's because I've been on, I've been on a, a, a few other podcasts this year talking about uh, Hallmark movies. And, uh, and uh, I mean, as everybody has said, all the Hallmark movies are very different this year. They don't really follow the formula. They've sort of tried to break out of that box. Um, so this was the first one that I watched. And it felt very Hallmark, you know, it, I understood it. Girl from the big city went to a small town. There's a business that's struggling. Uh, there's a guy that she doesn't get along with and it falls on, you know, it, it checked all of the boxes of what uh, one of these movies should be. So I like that about it. Yeah, so I think part of it with me with this movie is I, I mean, I am a Latter-day Saint. I don't drink wine at all. I don't drink alcohol at all. So like wine culture and wine in general is just not something I relate to at all, or I don't know, not that it can't be done well. I liked um, uh, the first Autumn in the Vineyard movie, uh, but a lot of these wine movies just, I just don't connect with it that much and the whole scene and everything. So I think that that hurt it on that level. I do really like Juliana Gwill. I think she's really sweet and fun. I think she's a good lead for these kind of movies and I think John Core is serviceable he's fine he's not like a favorite but I think he he does the job just fine uh I, I think they had potential with Meredith Baxter to be this kind of fun villain uh, and she was she she did a fine job um but one of the things that I found really strange about this movie and maybe it's just because again I don't have that experience as far as wine and wineries but the whole attempt to appeal to a family audience for a wine tasting seems very strange to me. Am I yeah. wrong? No, no, that's fair. Also, <laughs> it took them so long to even get to that point because yeah. the whole movie, <laughs> you're true. like, okay, so you're going to hold the thing at the winery and it'll be fine. And they don't even realize that until like Christmas Eve yeah. or something. Because <laughs> my understanding of wineries is that people usually go to an area and not like a specific vineyard. Like you go to Napa, you go to uh, you go to Tuscany or something like that. And then you maybe see a couple different vineyards. You go to a couple different wine tastings uh, to as part of your your thing and so it's not really like if you're talking destination travels which is supposedly what she's there to kind of encourage is this destination travel and so the whole idea of like let's appeal to the children i just thought it was so weird i was like what's happening why is santa there why are they like i don't know i thought it was really strange yeah what does it say about me i didn't even think about that <laughs> um yeah they're like let's have a hayride and let's 
we want more kids at this wine tasting. I thought that's really weird. <laughs> Uh, and they even at one point she's making wine and she makes a gummy bear wine, which again, I, I don't know, but that sounds, does that sound terrible or does that sound good? I don't know. I don't drink wine. Gummy bear again, wine. It's just going to taste like wine anyway. So <laughs> it all tastes like wine, no matter what they say, the flavor is. <laughs> like, I'm swirling it. I'm swirling it. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, you even have John Cor as Santa at one point in this movie. <laughs> and I was just kind of like, what is happening? And I just felt like all of the, uh, the strategies that she was bringing up were all more for, uh, or they didn't seem very effective in what would encourage destination travel. Uh, to the wine. I would think personally, I would think that you'd want to really encourage romance with wine tastings and that you would have things that'd be very coupley and very romantic, like dates and stuff. Well, maybe in uh, Christmas on the Vine 2, they'll <laughs> realize their mistakes. Oh my, the, yeah. the winery is failing again because these kids can't buy the wine. Because like the cookie and wine pairing, I feel like that had potential to be kind of romantic. Right, yeah. You know, you could do like chocolate and chocolate and wine pairing. Right, um, that's the thing, yeah. But they took it like kids and cookies and <laughs> I was just going, what? what? <laughs> Your next Maybe. idea to save the business will be to print fake IDs for all the kids. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there's this whole conflict over, she, she finds this journal of his grandfather, right? Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Finds this journal and it has a label and she wants to use that label instead of the label he created and then he gets very upset over that. And I was just kind of like, mm, <laughs> you've literally invited this person to come and revamp your winery. Why are you upset about a label change? A label that she like went out of her way to find from the grandfather. Yeah, so it wouldn't right. upset them. I would be more upset about making gummy bear wine. <laughs> <laughs> just out of. I he know yeah, he wasn't really happy about anything. <laughs> I mean, that sounds crazy to me, gummy bear wine. But again, what do I know about wines? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, and then you have also this Meredith Baxter character who wants to buy the winery, right? Because she's this conglomerate. She wants to eat it all up. Actually, she's that's bad. in a few of these movies, there was a bad guy who... <laughs> was just trying to buy the business and save the <laughs> save the struggling business people. Yeah, but I mean, it's a good thing they went the angle that they did because then you have this Mr. Talbot guy who comes in and he's he normally would be the bad man of business, but he's the good man of business, mm -hmm. right? He comes in and he's like, wow, this is a family-friendly wine company. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves this. He loves this idea. He loves the gummy bear wine. And so it's in with him, out with Meredith Baxter. So yeah. they, they were pretty smart, I guess. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> I don't know. I see, yeah, they could have, the, the, and they were like, there's this whole plot about like getting the distributors to come and taste the wine, but they mm -hmm. couldn't come because there was a storm. I don't know why they didn't just send the distributors <laughs> the wine. And it seems like they- You wouldn't yeah. get that family friendly atmosphere, evidently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and so Meredith Baxter's out and I just wish that we could have gotten more because Meredith Baxter seemed like she was in a lifetime cautionary tale thriller movie and everybody else was in a Hallmark, I mean a, a Christmas movie and I <laughs> just think like what does she do she was so she was so like different than everybody else in the whole film <laughs> It was it kind of made me laugh, and, I, and she's done so many of those lifetime. Yeah, what's what we call them on the podcast? The cautionary tales, 
uh, <laughs> where uh, things don't end well for our. She's in her own, uh, she's in her own genre the, yeah. the whole movie. <laughs> Maybe she's just really upset over gummy bear wine. Mm-hmm. I I would I would be upset. <laughs> <We're coming here. laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if you do you drink wine, you like, really. I was gonna say, what would be appealing? What would make you want to go? Aside from, I, I don't know. I don't think anything. Would make <laughs> yeah. Go to a winery for no reason. <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. I would probably showcase that more. I mean, it's hard in the winter. But during the fall and in the spring, mm-hmm. it's really pretty, the vineyards. Yeah, so I well, would have like I would have like date night. That's what I would think uh, would be smarter is to have date night wine tastings. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't know. Her idea was to put up some Christmas lights in that t- <laughs> and that, that very strange Christmas uh, wine bottle tree. Showing, they were everyone was like, "Wow, that's great!" But they never really showed it. I know, I know. I was like, "Did they make? Is that? A, it must be a thing." I definitely built that just for this movie. Yes. Yeah. 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 There must be a thing to have the wine things. So uh, it very well could be that I am just not the target demographic for this movie, despite hosting a Hallmark podcast, Lifetime podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it just, <laughs> I don't know, please, if you are listening and you are a, uh, have a, <laughs> if you are big wine fans and you say, hey, wait a minute, they have tons of family friendly activities, then please put in the comment section, let us know. Cause I just don't know. And that just seemed funny to me and strange in this movie. And I, I thought that their chemistry was okay. What did you think about their chemistry? Yeah, it wasn't, um, you know, it was. It was fine. It was fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was my general review of the film. Um, it was all fine. Yeah. I think, yeah, I wasn't like waiting for them to, you know, like you mm-hmm. obviously know they're going to have their kiss and stuff, but you weren't like, oh my God, when, when is this going to happen? Yeah. 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 And then she gets the, there's also the whole element of the Christmas tree ornament that she gets at the end from mm-hmm. Uh, that was her grand that was his grandfather's and uh because she's going to carry on the legacy uh and she was going to get the big jar job and then she she decides not to take the big job and uh so yeah that was definitely a theme in this night's tonight's movies mm-hmm. don't ever take the big job oh no <laughs> that's a terrible choice a stay in your small town <laughs> because some guy it wants you to help run his business yeah <laughs> if any of those big podcast conglomerates networks wants to hire a small town podcaster <laughs> i volunteer <laughs> you just haven't met the right person yet no. to make you stay in your small town <laughs> they should make a movie about this yeah i i think so well there's actually one on lifetime coming up uh with uh i think it's christmas in the air i think i can't remember but it's with um melissa joan hart and she plays a podcaster. Ooh, I know. High hopes then for that. It, one. it is high, high hopes. Uh, mm-hmm. But and Jason Priestley. I mean, oh, come on, get out of here! Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> out of five for Christmas on the Vine, five stars. What would you give it? Um, I'll give it a three. I'll give it a three because I don't like to. You know, people worked hard on it. <laughs> I think it does its job. Uh-huh. It's a three out of five. <laughs> so I so have seen so many of these. I'm not as nice as you. Mm-hmm. Um, I would give it, I'm going to give it a 2.75. 2. Yeah, um, yeah. All right. So then we have Christmas on Wheels. And this stars Tia Sir Carr and Michael Xavier. And this is upon learning that her uncle sold her mom's vintage convertible, a car full of Christmas memories, Ashley enlists the help of her uncle's attorney, Duncan, to get it back. So (laughs) um, this is another bad luck one for me because I also am not into cars at all. I mean, obviously I drive one, so it's not the same as as (laughs) the, the wine question, but 
I just do not care about cars. I don't have any sentimentality for cars. My car has literally almost 200,000 miles on it. I do not care about cars. So that this, that was a hard kind of thing for me to get on board with this one of just being so sentimental about this car, especially when she had been away for a long time and she expect, I don't know what she expected. She, she didn't care enough to be there and to now that whole the whole setup was weird Um, yeah like if she wanted the car she could buy the car herself why didn't she just buy it i mean i guess tell her even that it was that it was being sold yeah and i don't know it's just like well if you cared that much about all of this stuff because she was so sentimental then because most of the time what happens in these movies is the person goes to the city they and they kind of become a little bit cold they become the you know the woman of business whatever but that wasn't her she like went to the city and yet stayed still so sentimental about everything and so she showed no interest in any of those any of the traditions or anything yeah yeah what was going she came back to the town based on a phone call that was like you should come here and she was like okay it was very there was no like Mm -hmm. reason for it really Mm -hmm. and it just so happened i guess that he was up in the city that uh, she because she's gonna she's compiling all this stuff that so she can open an antique store in the city evidently is her mm-hmm. goal and so she's there at this auction at the beginning and he is there just by chance i guess buying stuff did we ever figure out why he was buying stuff there was a thing about how because he's a because he's an estate lawyer he likes he knows the value of different things and okay he's just buying it for his own stuff he's not buying to resell it though or anything well he's buying it so he can give it to her at the end well yeah (laughs) right (laughs) um and so yeah i i don't know i really want to like tia sarkar's christmas movies i like her as a as an actress i really do but her she hasn't wowed me yet with any of her christmas movies and i don't know why um, but this one also didn't really work for me very well. I, I felt like, I don't know, it just wasn't that interesting seeing them go from place to place to try to find the car. And then once they found the car, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just didn't think it was a very good movie. Um, I don't know. Do you, did you like it more than me or about the same? I'm just going to keep saying it was fine. <laughs> Um, oh, nice. Yeah, I feel like there wasn't a lot of stakes. There wasn't a lot of reason for things to happen. Uh, I did find myself saying um, a lot of the time that it was that I found it funny because, like, you know, the whole joke in Cup of Cheer is just that they're going from one plot point to the next with no reason for any of it, and that was sort of what this felt like a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, let's let's go, let's find the car because because that's what we have to do next to go drive the story forward. Right, and, and people and are like just giving down. away the car, and yeah. I'm thinking if it was so in demand, wouldn't they want some kind of compensation for the car? But then yeah, the car is giving the car away for free. Yeah, and then the car is kind of anthropomorphic at a certain point. It was like a Herbie car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like what is happening here um, and so i'm like is it got, it's got like christmas magic it's a christmas magic car i just um, been a transformer though yeah i wasn't a transformer that would have been that would have made it funny that would have been interesting <laughs> if oxmas prime is on the, the transformers christmas special <laughs> i'm sure they'll do it one day there's been a disturbance uh, an Optimus Prime. You know. <laughs> and the Slay is actually an undercover yeah. Autobot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the Decepticons are. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and so they they uh, they search for the car, and they talk to like two or three different people. Um, each time the each person that has had the car has kind of had. Uh, it's it's magic has been spreading throughout we saw a similar story this year on up tv with mistletoe magic where the it was like a magic mistletoe had gone from and and spread love wherever it had ended up um uh, with this car <laughs> uh, and then they play they have a stop where they play this christmas board game then and that looked fun 
I, I, I thought I, I need to get one of those board games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the questions, right, right? Yeah. I was yeah. like, that looked good. Uh, the, the other thing, so she, that theme to be there. <laughs> she's also looking at one point, once they find the car, then they're looking for a tailpipe to fix the car. But right. The problem seems to be in the starter. I mean, again, I'm no expert on cars. <laughs> this is just, this is, this is pulling for the reaches of my knowledge base here with wine and cars. But um, I don't think that the, the tailpipe should affect your starter. Well, I'm not one to answer that, but I love that the that at the Christmas market in the center of town, there just happened to be a booth who sold an antique tailpipe. Yeah, that was good luck. He was like, this my antique tailpipe business really needs a booth at the town's Christmas market. This is where everyone's gonna go to buy these tailpipes. Yeah, but I am pretty sure that the starter is on the whole other side of the car it's an yes, engine the tailpipe is way on the other side so and I, the solution ended up just being that she kept trying to start until it started she could have done that the first time yeah i think Gave it needed her. a new starter or alternator but maybe there's not like vintage alternators i don't know <laughs> or just a new engine in general yeah <laughs> just <the> engine. yeah <laughs> there was a a hallmark movie this August where that was the big point of conflict what or one of the big points of conflict was do I use old parts or new parts in the car <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> so they needed they needed Paul Campbell's auto mechanic to come oh. and look at this car I think and, and how was Paul Campbell Paul Campbell is a total and complete delight and I absolutely love him. He can work on my car if he wants. I've worked with Paul Campbell before. So. Oh, have you? Yeah. yeah, no, he's one of our favorites, actually. He was the first actor that we yeah. ever interviewed as, as the podcast. Oh, very cool. It was just a funny element of the movie. I actually really enjoyed the movie Wedding Every Weekend, but um, <laughs> but it was just, I just couldn't get into that conflict of like, do I use new parts or old parts? What? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so we find out that there's this backstory with Duncan that he was a recipient of her mother's Christmas on wheels. Mm -hmm. And so that he, ever since that happened, he's basically been in, had a crush on her. And so what did you think about their chemistry between the two of them? Tia Sakar and- It was good. I also like her as an actress. Mm -hmm. um, and he was good. Yeah, they, they might have had the best chemistry of all of the three films, um, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, they had fine chemistry. It, it, there were some cute moments. He mm -hmm. had kind of a winking sensibility about him, which I enjoyed. And I just wish we could get her in better scripts. Uh, I, I think she has so much potential for these kind of movies, but didn't really love hers last year. And the one the year before was probably her best. She's done three. Uh, and I, I like, I wish we could have gotten her in, um, uh, in Keisha Knight Pulliam's movie. I mean, Keisha, she was good too, but I really liked that script. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, it called the Christmas aunt. That was really good. But anyway, well, she's, very, she's a very funny actress. So, mm -hmm. uh, she should, yeah. I mean, It'd be nice if she was in something that would that could show that off yeah yeah and so then the it's not only that the starter won't work but it literally is sensitive to her being with the right person she cannot start the car if her love isn't there you could have just put a backpack on the passenger seat <laughs> like when you want to when the seat like when the seat belt the uh, thing turns off and you need a sensor for the <laughs> well i mean i don't think it would have just started without with just anybody like if her uncle had been in this i don't think that would have worked oh well, she didn't try it we don't know <laughs> we don't know yeah. <laughs> the questions that i have we will we'll never know i know and so i it's true are there multiple of these anthropomorphic cars out there <laughs> that are sensitive to love also uh, it's a convertible in the middle of winter that's not great yeah, it's true. Although That's the version true. I watched of the film, it was still summer. They had not yet 
put in the snow. Yeah. So he then gives her the bell and they, as you said, he had it just for her and they reunite and, uh, and then Tony, uncle Tony proposes to the woman that I thought that they were like married. What did that surprise you? No. Cause they did have a thing at the beginning when she's like, Hey, how are you doing? Are you guys still not married yet? And he's like, yep, still not married. <laughs> Somehow I missed that. I wasn't paying his <laughs> enough attention. I was like, what? What is this happening? So they need, they finally got with it. So the, the car did its magic there too. Yeah. With Tony. And he got the ring appraised before giving it to her. Oh, he did. <laughs> uh, through the, through the guide, through the lawyer. Uh-huh. Presumably, I don't know, to find out if she was worth the price of the ring that he was giving her. It was, it was very strange. That was weird. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, so then he proposes and then they stop the car and then they get out in the middle of the road and they're <laughs> dancing. What did you think of that? Was I also that like that there was a Christmas tree in the middle, in the, on the other lane, to like to block <laughs> traffic, I guess. Because they, were they would did they block the traffic because of Christmas on Wheels? Is this the or, same movie where they had the whole subplot about those tr triangle trees? The subplot where they like got rid of all the old fashioned decorations in the town, and the mayor put in. Oh yeah, 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 trees, yeah. And then they just went out and replaced them on their own one night. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on here. Yeah. <laughs> in this, yeah. in this film. <laughs> Um, and yeah, so then they're dancing in the middle of the street and the thing they, we get no kiss. There was no kiss oh, in this true. movie. Yeah. And that's the first time I have to imagine that was a COVID thing. And if that's the it case, like a COVID movie, was it filmed? Was it filmed recently? Cause there was a lot of extras in it for a COVID movie. Um, I don't know that for a fact, I just assumed there was no reason why there wasn't a kiss. They're blocking traffic for goodness sakes. <laughs> I, I'm i seeing pictures on set and they're definitely have shields and things oh, okay. on IMDb. So it had to be, why? Huh. I don't know, it was weird. <laughs> I was like, why didn't they have a kiss at the end? Yeah, they're, they're doing a whole bunch of other stuff that wouldn't be COVID safe anyway, so. Yeah, they're dancing and stuff like that <laughs> in the middle of the road. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I think I gave this a call in our preview. So there wasn't a, I wasn't anticipating it just cause I'm not a car person at all. Um, so it's <laughs> not that really a surprise, but, uh, there is, did you see, I don't know if you saw on Twitter, there was kind of a meme. There's a, there was, there was a spot in this movie where she totally trips over the blanket snow which is kind of funny. She's like, walking. Oh, I would love to see that. Like, wow, they couldn't do another take. <laughs> she doesn't trip over the obvious time, They snow. gotta get it out. They're filming and then the next day it premieres. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so I don't know. It, I don't think it was a very successful film. Uh, I am going to give it a 2.3. Uh, what about you? Right, you can probably guess. I'm going to give it a three. Okay. <laughs> very good. All right, so then the last movie is called The Christmas Edition. And I actually really liked uh, Marie Osmond's movie last year. I'm not a Marie Osmond hater uh, by any means. I, I actually thought they did a good job last year of kind of weaving her into the story in a somewhat natural way. And I really liked Rob, she was actually in Rob Mays' movie last year, randomly. Um, and I thought that, his movie last year was quite charming. It was a road trip movie and there was a lot of nice witty banter and Mara Sakoff, I think was, was in it. Anyway, there was nice witty banter in it and it was overall just, I thought pretty entertaining. And uh, so this one was actually, this one was my favorite of the three, um, but I'm not saying it's, it's a super strong film, but uh, it probably was my favorite of the three. I think a lot of it because Carly Hughes, I'm a big fan of hers on American Housewife. 
And I, 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 it was a little bit distracting because I love her so much in American Housewife and her character is totally different in American Housewife. And I know that's my problem, not her problem, uh, because I just know her from that. And so sometimes it's hard when you just know somebody from one role and then I've seen them in a different role because she basically plays a, uh, she's in, in American Housewife, she plays the lead character's best BFF, who's a lesbian, a hard, kind of hard nosed attorney in that show. And she's hilarious and so funny. Uh, so it was just so different than this role, which was a little bit jarring, but I still like her a lot and I came around. <laughs> um, but this movie, it stars Carla Hughes and Rob Mays and a little bit of Marie Osmond. And <laughs> it's the plot is that it's Christmas time and Jackie, an up and coming journalist, finds that her life is at a crossroads until she finds an unexpected opportunity to run a small town newspaper in Alaska. Jackie decides to give it a try and relocates to the picture perfect town. Using a series of Christmas articles, she's able to quickly return the newspaper to profitability and soon falls in love both with her new home and the handsome son of the paper's former owner. However, when her old boss announces plans to take over the paper for herself, Jackie will need a Christmas miracle to save it. So talk about your classic Hallmark plots. Right. This, this was probably the very most classic. <laughs> You got a journalist, you got a small town, you got all the ingredients. There was a glass blower, which was cool. Yes. Yeah. That's probably what worked the best for me in this movie is like the little sort of couple moments, the mm -hmm. glass blowing. And yeah, yeah, I liked that. And then the Northern Lights, uh, the planetarium, mm -hmm. that was fun for me. Yeah. I don't know. O overall, what did you think of this one? I watched this one the most recently, like as in an hour ago. Okay. Um, and it's bad that I remember the least about it. Uh -huh. that, might, that might say something. Um, I do. I remember there was a lot of funny leaps of logic. Like she read about the, I mean, uh, these, this is natural, obviously going to happen in, in all these movies, but you know, she read about the paper um, didn't seem to call ahead or anything, just went ahead and moved to Alaska the next day, showed yeah. up, like, I'm taking over the paper. And then she finds out all the stuff about the paper. And it's like, well, you should have called and asked at least one question. <laughs> Pretty much anything that you start to ask with when it involves journalism in this movie is just completely absurd and ridiculous and <laughs> and we're just completely nuts i'm i don't even consider myself a journalist but i'm a podcaster and i have published in, in a, i've published several articles as freelance credit film critic in newspapers and everything in this this movie is completely ridiculous right. like, yes totally yeah. everything as with a journalism degree i agree with that the journalism parts do not hold up no I mean, if this movie was made in 1995, I'd be like, okay, you know, they're talking about like print versus digital. And yeah, that, like that was so funny. They were like, people don't want to read the news anymore. They want to watch it on TV. Mm. No, they don't. <laughs> still 15 years late. Yeah. Maybe if you're talking like super polarizing kind of news, like you're talking yeah. your MSNBCs, your Fox News maybe but even that is you know it's, it's changing people yeah. are getting their news from from uh, twitter from local uh sources online uh from youtube things like that mm -hmm. and uh which has pluses and minuses but um uh but yeah so marie osmond she she has this little scene at the very beginning and uh, she's like the cold digital lady. I'm gonna make everything digital. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what do you? What's your feeling on Marie Osmond? Are you a hater or no opinion or? I have no opinion of her as a as an entertainer. As a uh -huh. um, she was, like I said, she was very Cruella Deville in this movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
which uh, I think could have been more fun if they had really leaned, into, leaned it into it. And, it yeah. yeah. That would have been cool. It made her a real ice queen of business. It could have yeah. been. But it was, it, it was just, she had a lot of lines that were like very, very generic journalism villain like yeah. you are you you're gonna be the junior reporter because the papers and the numbers like what yeah. it was like a scene from cup of chair actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and so they they've that finn's parents rob Mays's character see in the last one he was a musician which he is a musician in real life it just fit his character way better it was way better in this one he's a glass blower right mm -hmm. yeah he's a glass blower but his he's kind of that classic uh hallmark man of many jobs like usually his passion is something vaguely manly <laughs> but artistic and everyone's like don't do it and he's like but that's what i really want to do <laughs> the classic is because the man of business is always is almost always the the villain the wrong guy is your bad man of business mm -hmm. your right guy is usually a small town guy that is good at everything like uh paul green in uh christmas at angel falls he literally has probably seven jobs in the course <laughs> of that movie he's like oh i'm just helping out so and so click click you run an in you drive a taxi you do the local ice sculptures yeah. but usually not just that usually they're like you know, you see them out helping, they're volunteer firefighters, they're, you know, helping with the the, the, sale. the festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kevin McGarry in um, Christmas Scavenger Hunt, the very beginning of that movie, he's like fixing some lady's car. And then he's like, has the weirdest job in that movie. He is running the town historical society museum or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so <laughs> she's also, I think, maybe I read it wrong, but I thought it was, she was moving to Janu, Alaska. Yeah. I think, which isn't even really that small of a town. I looked it up, 32,000 people. Mm -hmm. So it's like not even a small town. Like it could have gone to like Fairbanks or someplace actually small in Alaska. That's true. Yeah. Cause everyone knew them. Like the mayor walked in and everyone was like, hello, mayor. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is not like Stars Hollow, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, uh, and and I, I just died when there's like extra, extra. Here's the paper. I'm like what? What is this? 1925. They're like they got like paper boys going down the street. Line up out the door for people to get the paper. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't figured out distribution yet. They just sell it right out of their office. Yeah, extra, extra. Read all about it. This <laughs> is a. Uh, this is the lantern grove is the name of the paper and she decides that she's going to she wants to make this a daily paper not just a monthly paper as it currently is which is really stupid <laughs> like i can understand if they want to make it a monthly paper that sounds sustainable we have that here in in uh where i am a town they have a draper monthly that you get with your coupons and stuff like that mm -hmm. that you could do that <laughs> That could work. I mean, is there really enough like local stuff also, going on? They were so successful because she she like the secret she figured out was that they wanted the town wanted to read about Christmas, and so then yeah. it was it was a huge success. But what the hell happens in January? <laughs> then you start. Then she's gonna go back to she's gonna go back to uh, what's her name? She's gonna go back to yeah. Marie Osmond and say, "Please buy my paper. No one's reading it anymore. There's no more Christmas stories." Yeah. And yeah, they, they, uh, they're, I guess they'll start talking about the, uh, Valentine's maybe. I don't know. No, it's a problem. Don't care about Valentine's in that town. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and the only two employees of the paper are Edna and Dolores. And I think that they were the highlights of the film. Do you agree? Yes. I'm yes. pretty sure I had seen them before as well. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so Edna is played by Aloma Wright, is her name. Let me see what else she's been in. I'm looking. She was fun. She's from uh, Scrubs, Korea. That's, uh, she was in very, very many episodes of, episodes of Scrubs. Uh, yeah. And she was on Days of Our Lives. 
Um, she's been on a bunch of shows. Yeah, she, tons of Scrubs, 92 episodes of Scrubs. That's probably where we all know her. She's hilarious. She did a good job. She was yeah. funny. And uh, yeah, and then Dolores was also funny. So they were the highlights of this film, for sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, like I said, I liked the glass blowing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a little, I'm like, oh, don't get hurt. But I like a little cozy. Anytime when the characters can kind of lean on each other and get all cozy. And you had some of that going on with the glass blowing. And it was a cool thing that you don't see a lot of. In yeah. Yeah, it wasn't your standard like wreath making or cookie making. It was something different. So I agree. That was fun. Yeah. And then you see him ice sculpting. Because uh, that was another example. He's the man with many jobs. He does the ice sculpting. He does the, he's helping with the paper because that's his, his parents. He has the glass blowing. The, uh, the planetarium date was fun. Northern mm-hmm. Lights. How does he have access to that? I don't know. I mean, uh, he's he seems to have access to everything in this town, even though it's thirty-two thousand people. He's a big wig. He's very exciting. He's and uh, so then, this Melanie, who is that's Marie Osmond's character, she wants to buy the paper, make it digital, and then hire Jackie to be the editor of the whole conglomerate. And <laughs> Jackie's like, <gasps> "What are you doing?" <laughs> It's like get behind me <laughs> uh, so that's a terrible how dare she offer her dream job uh, and days after basically telling her to get out yeah <laughs> and then she she wears well we also get a, a a scene of carly hughes singing which i appreciated it was completely random but hey she's a broadway star i'll take it <laughs> Yeah, it was good. Unlike the singing in uh, Christmas on Wheels, which was not great. <laughs> no, it was not. That's yeah. true. That's true. Uh, but it has been nice this season, whether Lifetime or Hallmark, they're using all these Broadway people uh, to the best of their abilities, which I appreciate. Uh, so then we have Finn. He tells her, oh, take the dream job. Don't just stay here. And so mm-hmm. she thinks about, she writes her final article. She's going to leave. And then of course she changes her mind and says, I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave. The, the And we also see her at the party with her beautiful red sparkly dress, mm-hmm. uh, which she looked very pretty. I thought mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. looked very good. So she turns down the job offer. She says to Marie Osmond, forget you. <laughs> in your evil ways and yeah so they're having a flourishing in the year 2020 a flourishing paper in Genoa, alaska the lantern grove every day so and, congratulations uh, and then she <laughs> christmas dinner uh and there was luckily a seat for her yeah that was lucky that was very good <laughs> so yeah so this movie it was not the best but it was my favorite of the three, just for those reasons. Um, I'm, I would give this one three stars. And so you continue your streak, of three stars. I'm going to give it 3.1. I'd just be, you convinced me that it was a little better, actually. <laughs> okay, good. Yes. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, before we go, I want, uh, we have some fun, silly holiday questions okay. that I want to give you. And uh, so, you ready? Yep. Okay. First question: What is your favorite holiday drink? Uh, hot chocolate. Okay. Yeah, better. You had so much <laughs> in cup of cheer. Uh, this whole theme. Uh, what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Uh, I, I would choose like a, a soft ginger snap. Mm, sounds good. Mm. Okay. What is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Oh my God, I've been listening to Christmas music all year this year. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I don't even know anymore. 
<laughs> if and you... Carol of the Bells came to mind. I don't know. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Are you like OD'd on Christmas after spending this year? Are you like, I don't want to celebrate it this year? Or I are you thought just I was. For it? Then now you see like decorations and stuff go up and it's starting to get cold. And you're like, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Don't want it to break your spirit, Christmas <laughs> spirit. All right. Uh, so, what is your favorite Christmas classic Christmas movie? elf a classic yeah elf yeah. okay good i love elf okay uh what is your favorite holiday tradition that you do every year um putting up the, the tree or making cookies the, the, or the food the... although food? i do like to make, i like to make um the, like rice krispies with the red and green rice krispies like rice krispy squares oh, yeah uh Those that's a good, good. That's a good one. Very good. Okay. Which do you prefer, Scrooge or the Grinch? The Grinch. Okay. Clear lights or colored? Colored. Okay. Would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Ooh, uh, build a snowman. Okay, good. Uh, right. Would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper? No. Although I've had to wrap a lot of gifts this year. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely gotten better. I watched a few YouTube tutorials. Even learned mm -hmm. how to tie a bow. Ooh, yeah. Very good. Okay. Last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? I do. You can see it in Cup of Cheers in the background of one of the scenes. Oh, good. Yeah. What's your ugly Christmas sweater? It's a uh, reindeer with like red and green striped sleeves, and the reindeer, there's like a <laughs> pom pom right on the stomach for the reindeer's nose. Oh, no. <laughs> so it sticks out a bit. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds good. The more accessories coming oh, out yeah, the yeah. sweater. Yeah the better yeah. yeah very good well congratulations on finishing the film that's a huge accomplishment and uh so thank you so much for coming on telling us about it and uh we wish you the best of luck and a uh, very merry christmas and why don't you tell people where they can and you mentioned at the beginning but where they can watch the film and yeah, uh, yeah. um yeah so so cup of cheer um you can you can watch it for free on Amazon Prime uh, starting on November 20th. It's on Vudu, it's on VOD, on Comcast, and um, wherever you might find uh, movies like that. It's also streaming for free on Tubi, if you have Tubi. So there's a lot of free ways to check it out. Um, if you want a, just a really silly comedy, um, then it's a good choice to uh, to watch something that's different than your usual Christmas movies this year. And it's yeah. really just been a, a terrible year. So it's a good yeah. time to just laugh at some stupid stuff. That's right. We can only get some laughter this year for sure. Well, thank you again. Congratulations on your movie. And if people want to follow you on social media or that kind of thing, how can they do that? Oh, uh, you can find me at by BYJ Corwitz on Twitter. Sometimes I tweet funny things. Um, <laughs> You can follow our Cup of Cheer uh, accounts at Cup of Cheer Movie, um, mostly on Instagram, but we also have Twitter and Facebook. And yeah, we would love to. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Cup of Cheer is a, you know a, a, an independent movie, and the, the way that we're gonna get the word out is by people telling their friends about it and tweeting about it and and using social media to spread the word. So that would mean a lot for us if if you find something funny in it and it, and it helped brighten your year. Uh, then just tell us and we'd love to hear from you. Great. Yeah. And we'll have all that information in the description section. If you want to check it out and we'll have it all there. So thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. We really Thank appreciate you, it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and one uh, to tick off my Christmas list to get. All right. Back. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Well, you can find, uh, make sure you're following the podcast, a homeworkies pod and homeworkies podcast, all of our social media. And, uh, and if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews that helps us out so much. And if you are watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. And you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So please take a look at that. I really appreciate it. And we also have our patron group, which is a lot of fun and is we're so grateful for that support. So that information will be in the description and our merch store, which has tons of holiday inspired designs. And so thanks again, Jake. I really appreciate it. And we will talk again next week for more non-Hallmark Christmas coverage. Bye everyone. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas.